Hello, Caledonians. We are going to attempt a lab today. We are going to be trying to determine the enthalpy for salts when they're dissolved in water. Now, we can always measure temperature, but we want to get to the enthalpy, the energy, which is measured in joules again. Now, you're used to hearing the term salt, meaning NaCl, and that is true. It is a salt. But we also have calcium chloride and ammonium chloride today as well. Anytime you have an ion compound, where you take a metal and a non-metal put together, we generally categorize those as salts. So we're going to go ahead, do this lab as we're doing it. I would like you to pause the video to record your data as we go through this experiment. And even in my kitchen, yes, I've got my safety goggles. What would a lab be without those? Let's get to step one. Gather about 0.5 grams of each salt, recording the exact measurement, and calculate how many moles you have of it. Ooh, we still have to do moles. That's correct. Here we go. Let's get to work. It was supposed to be about 0.5. In all cases, it was over that. That's okay. We're keeping track of that mass. Next, let's go ahead and figure out the molar mass of the salt and then use our math to figure out how many moles of salt we actually have. We are going to take these salts and dump them into about five milliliters of water. When we do that, the temperature is probably going to go up, go down, or stay the same. And that's the thing you're like, I didn't even know water changed temperatures when you put salt in, into it. And it does. It sometimes changes temperature. That's what we're trying to figure out. So let's go on to step two, three, and four. see how I've got the salt set up. The one on the furthest left, that's going to be our calcium chloride. We have 5.8 milliliters of water for there. Our sodium chloride is in the middle, that 5.4 milliliters. And our ammonium chloride is on the right at 5.6 milliliters. Now let's go ahead and check out what is their temperature reading with the thermometers. As you can see, on the left, our calcium chloride temperature is at about 21.9 degrees. Our sodium chloride test tube is at about 22.0 degrees Celsius. And the test tube that we will eventually put the ammonium chloride in is at about 22.0. Now let's go ahead and add the salts and see what happens. We'll start with the calcium chloride. Next, we'll go to the sodium chloride. And last but not least, let's go ahead and add the ammonium chloride salt. Let's go ahead and take a look at those final temperatures. With our calcium chloride, we've gone all the way up to 36.0. For our sodium chloride, it appears as if we are at about 21.0. And for our ammonium chloride, the temperature has decreased down to 16.0. So here's what we have for our data. We can see our temperatures are set up there, our initial temperatures here, we have our final temperatures here. They all behave differently. So let's go ahead and subtract those numbers and find out what our final temperatures are. And you'll note, I did put positives and negatives. You do want to keep track. Was the temperature going up or was the temperature going down? We are trying to figure out the energy change of water. And you're like, wait a second, I thought we were dealing with salt. We first need to figure out water. So we've got this formula. This is formula we can look up in a book. It says Q equals M times C times triangle T. Now the Q we look up here, that's going to be the heat in joules. We're trying to calculate how many joules did the water gain or lose? The M, that stands for the mass of the water. Now, you're like, wait, we never figured out how much the water weighed. You're right, but we did figure out the volume of water. And we can remember from the beginning of chemistry that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So in these situations, if the volume is 5.8, then guess what? The mass is 5.8. C, what's C? C is the specific heat. For water, this value is 4.184. We've talked about that in the past. Triangle T, that's the change in temperature for the water. So at this stage, I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can fill in the values for each one of the trials. I'll do it now as well. 
So now that I have everything in, you can see all three formulas look very much the same. We have the same specific heat for all of them. I've converted all of my milliliters of water into grams of water, and I have the corresponding temperature changes that took place when different salts were placed into them. If we look at the units, this is a joule on top of a gram and a degree Celsius. So this gram cancels out with this gram, and this degree Celsius cancels with this degree Celsius. So when I get all done over here to the answer, I'm going to have an answer that will be in joules. Now we are not worrying about sig figs at this point, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my calculator and figure out what those final answers are. Did the water gainer lose energy? Well, in that first situation, when we were dealing with calcium chloride, it got really hot. What was the water doing? The water was gaining energy. The water gained a whole bunch of energy from the salt. If we look at the next case with the NaCl, so what was the water doing? The water was actually losing energy. And in the last case with our ammonium chloride, that one, it got colder as well because it was losing energy. So here is the big challenge. To take what we did here, now let's apply that right here. What about the chemical? What did the salt do? If the water gained energy, where did it get it from? Well, if the water gained energy, then guess what the salt did? The salt lost energy. The salt must have lost energy. Now, over here, if NaCl was put into here and the water lost energy, then what was the salt doing? It was gaining energy. And same thing with this one. If the water was losing energy, then the salt must have gained energy. So we weren't able to, but if you could have zoomed in on that test tube and seen your thermometer in there, and you had the salt that's being dissolved in there, the salt was stealing energy or getting rid of energy, and it gave it to the water or took it from the water, and the thermometer showed the temperature of the water. So when we ask this question, is the dissolving of this salt exothermic or endothermic? Well, in this case, this salt loses energy, and if you lose energy, that is exothermic. And in this case, if the salt was gaining energy, then this was endothermic. And in this one, same thing, it was endothermic. So when we compare, when someone gains, someone loses. If the salt was exothermic, then you could have said that the water was endothermic. If the salt's endothermic, then the water was exo. And if the salt was endo, then this water was exo. So we get to this thing, this triangle H. Remember triangle H means enthalpy, and enthalpy is just a fancy word for saying energy. What's the heat? Well. If this guy up here gained 342.2 joules, guess what the salt did? The salt lost 342.2 joules. It's the same number, flip-flopped. If this one lost that much energy, then guess what? This salt gained 22.6 joules. If this one lost this much energy, then this one gained that many joules of energy. These numbers would be positive. We get to the last part, and this is what we do in science. We want to compare these values. Right now, these all look very different, but I wanna know per mole, how do they compare? Just like if we talk about in a basketball game when someone has a whole bunch of points. Well, how many points per game do they score? I wanna know their average. I wanna know the same thing here. How many joules per mole do they have? So I'm gonna take these joules, and I'm gonna divide them by the moles that I have on my prior page. So if we look back to here, I had originally, how many moles do I have of each one of those salts? Here, here, and here. When I go through and do the math and I take my joules divided by the moles, I get these sets of numbers. And these are all now in joules per mole. They're kind of large numbers. So sometimes in the world of math, we would like to make numbers so they're more manageable. So I've just done this last step where we turn it into kilojoules per mole. If you want to do kilojoules per mole, all we're going to do is move the decimal three to the left. So, so now that I have this data in here, I've also put in the negatives and the positives in here. I know the enthalpy of dissolution or the enthalpy that takes place when these salts dissolve in water. In the case of calcium chloride, that's something that's exothermic. You could see the temperature go up quite a bit. In the case of table salt, that was in our situation endothermic, but not by much, a very, very small amount. And in the case of the ammonium chloride, that was very endothermic. And when you talk about those temperatures, you could really feel this one was hot and this one was very, very cold. This one felt about the same.